In this film, I'm going to explore the Intertropical Convergence Zone. I'm Sylvia Knight from the Royal Meteorological Society. The Intertropical Convergence Zone, or ITCZ, is a belt around the tropics, which roughly marks the warmest place of the Earth's surface. Winds come together from the northern and the southern hemispheres at the ITCZ, um, and it's frequently where you'll find a belt of cloud and rainfall as well. And the ITCZ moves around with the seasons to its furthest north position in about June, to its furthest south position in about December. So the ITCZ basically marks the warmest part of the Earth's surface. Different parts of the Earth's surface are heated different amounts by the sun. Where the sun is overhead, the sun's light and heat are spread out less, warming the Earth's surface more. Where the sun is lower in the sky, at an angle to the surface, the light and heat are spread out more and the surface is warmed less. In addition, the heat and light take a longer path through the atmosphere where the sun is lower in the sky, and more is scattered or reflected away by cloud droplets, for example. So the Earth's surface is warmest where the sun is overhead, and that's over the Tropic of Cancer in June and over the Tropic of Capricorn in December. How does that drive the world's weather? First, let's take a step back and remember that warm air rises, whether that's the air being heated in a hot air balloon or the air above a radiator. Um, I've got a simple demo um, for which I've got a tea bag, the sort that comes with a tag attached, which I've just emptied out and turned into a cylinder of tissue paper. If I set fire to that now, then there's warm air rising from the tea bag, and as it burns down, it's getting lighter until eventually the warm air rising is light enough for the tea bag to take off. What happens to the rising air? As it rises, it cools and eventually cools to the temperature at which there is more condensation going on than evaporation. At that point, cloud forms. So we frequently see cloud marking the ITCZ. Some of the cloud droplets will get big enough to fall as rain, so the ITCZ is marked as a belt of rainfall as well. So we have cloud and rainfall marking the ITCZ. Let's have a look at current satellite images and rainfall charts. You can see these clear bands of cloud and rainfall marking the current intertropical convergence zone. The rising air hits the top of the troposphere, the bottom part of our atmosphere which contains all our weather, and can't carry on rising, so the air spreads out and moves towards the poles. Similarly, the rising air is replaced by air flowing in from the north and south near the surface. These are the trade winds. We can look at them on Null School, which shows current airflow. You'll notice that the trade winds are much more obvious over the oceans than over the, over the land. This is because there's less friction over the ocean's water than over land. Friction slows the surface winds down. So how does the position of the ITCZ change with the seasons? We said previously that the sun is over the Tropic of Cancer in June and the Tropic of Capricorn in December, so you could expect the ITCZ to track the sun, maybe with a bit of a time lag as it takes the oceans and the land a while to warm up and cool down. If we use Null School to go back and look at the ITCZ in January and July last year, you can see that although it does seem to be further north in July than in January, it's always in the Northern Hemisphere, which seems a bit strange. In fact, here's a graph showing the latitude of the ITCZ through the last few years. You can see the zero degree line marking the equator and the seasonal pattern of the ITCZ moving north and south of the sun. But the ITCZ is almost always in the north. Why? It's because the Northern Hemisphere is, on average, warmer than the Southern Hemisphere. That's partly because of the snow and ice in Antarctica, which reflects the sun's light all through the year. And it's partly because there's more water in the Southern Hemisphere. Water has a higher heat capacity than land, meaning that it takes longer to warm up when the sun is overhead. So if the Northern Hemisphere is generally warmer than the Southern Hemisphere, it's not really surprising that the ITCZ, which marks the warmest part of the Earth's surface, tends to be in the Northern Hemisphere. What impact does the moving ITCZ have on our weather? Obviously, the places which get the cloud and the rainfall associated with the ITCZ move around with it. People have learned to work with these seasons, planning their farming and their travel according to the rainy and dry seasons. Animals do too. Routes of migration follow the rains and the fresh vegetation. Also, as the intertropical convergence zone moves around, the whole circulation of the atmosphere moves with it. The dry zones north and south of the ITCZ move, and even the jet stream and the storm track that bring us our stormy weather in the UK move around through the year. Usually it's to the north of the UK in summer. As the climate changes, we think that the ITCZ itself and the rainy places associated with it may get more narrow, but the dry zones to the north and south of it may extend further towards the poles.